everybody. So I'm making today the day of MIT open sourcing compression algorithms for everything. And then so uh, this is the last one for the day. And this is 99% audio compression, lossless, MIT licensed. If you're watching this and your very first instinct is, is that you want to like uh, make some stupid comment uh, on my channel, uh, then go ahead and do that. Um, I have two other videos that I've released just today with regards towards compression. The first one is lossless compression for hypervectors. And the second one is 10,000 X compression using entropy. Uh, and then uh, Three of these methods now are 100% MIT licensed, open sourced. I've been working on these for a few months. I've been working on them with physicists, uh, world-renowned physicists, physicists that have worked on, uh, let's say, like LIDAR and um, other technology like um, self-driving cars that don't actually require cameras. So I have a good decent understanding of the physics of these things. Uh, if you want to troll that, then, then let's go, bro. But so let's dive into this. Again, I'm MIT open source licensing this. That's what I don't get about that, right? Like, I, I, this is free for you. Like, and then you want to troll. I mean, let's, let's go. So phoneme vector compression and wave transformation using AI-generated speech <laughs> as an overview. This notebook explores AI-generated voice synthesis, spectrogram analysis, and advanced compression techniques using principal component analysis, or PCA, and snack token encoding. The goal is to investigate phoneme vector compression and wave transformation, leveraging AI-driven approaches for efficient data representation and reconstruction. Some of the key features are that this involves TTS synthesis, audio processing, and spectrogram analysis, PCA-based uh, compression, reconstruction from uh, compressed spectrograms, advanced SNAC token compression. I didn't inv invent SNAC, <laughs> so SNAC is uh, like uh, it's an it's an open source licensed. Um, algorithm. I'm utilizing the compression algorithm. So it encodes audio data into snack tokens and efficient recent, uh, representation of phonetic components, applies Hilbert curve mapping for structured compression and dimensionality reduction, and compares tokenization strategies to optimize storage and reconstruction fidelity. Uh, so going through here, essentially, uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? First thing that I do is just show you essentially, um, so here's a spectrogram, and then here's reconstructed spectrogram, right? Very straightforward. Uh, on the first one is, um, let's take an audio file, let's uh, compress it, and, and then let's reconstruct it. And then this is just simple uh, compression in this instance, nothing fancy, like uh, not doing any sort of wave transforms to the compression and not tokenizing it uh, first, et cetera. And then so... Let's go through and, and do what I just mentioned, right? Uh, so uh, this code is going to get a lot longer here. Uh, and then so what you can, so I like, again, I didn't invent snack, right? So this is like uh, the one part of this is the, 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 the snack library. Um, and then so uh, shout out to the authors of that, uh, Hubert C. C. Deck. Um, and then like the, there's a big paper on snack, et cetera. Uh, my method does utilize um, snack for the tokenization process and the compressing of the tokens is where that's, that comes in and then it's, it's needed. <laughs> and then so uh, there's like this is a lot of code, right? But so essentially what I'm doing is uh, in this instance, I'm taking uh, like a, a um, AI generated audio and I, I, like, um, I, I could play it for you, but I, I've realized on this with when I make the video, it won't play. Go into this collab notebook. It's 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 um, AI generated sounds. Like so, it's like beeps, like boop, 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 beep, 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 kind of like garbage, right? But uh, the thing is, is that like I can reconstruct garbage and I can test with garbage and I can tell um, if it's like if it's the same garbage or if it's different garbage. Um, and then so that's kind of what I'm testing here. Uh, and in the, in this first instance, I'm not extremely happy with these results. Um, but it's 50% compression, uh, uh, like before tokenization. And then we go through, um, and then again, like I, I can play, but it's, it won't come through on the speakers here. Uh, but so here's the main uh, the, the main results, right? So we take the audio file, and then we uh, essentially shrink it down, and then we compress it, and then when you re reconstruct it, it, it ends up being a huge file. But uh, we can see here the so um, we sh shrink it down to I tokenize it, right? So we're measuring it in tokens. So it's 1,187 tokens. I compress it uh, to 991 tokens, uh, and then we, with via the snap vectors, uh, stores 264 there, uh, and then our reconstructed audio size is uh, 
294,912 tokens. So uh, very significant difference there um, in that regard, right? And then I have this second notebook that I have here. And then I, I ran this in a, a um, this notebook here that is uh, on uh, tied to a second account because I ran out of, honestly, um, collab time for, for GPU. This will not run without GPU. So like uh, you need to enable T4. Uh, and if you can't enable T4 in this collab environment, then it won't run in the collab environment. Like um, it, 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 a snack needs NVIDIA, like just flat out. And then so, but in this one though, um, you'd see this is where I get the, the massive compression, right? Uh, so our input size is 500 tokens. I reduce it down to 50 tokens, 10X. Very cool. And then it decompresses to the same. And then same size comparison, right? Uh, so our, our essentially, uh, where our original token size is 552 tokens, I compress it down to 100, uh, and then with some uh, snack vector size, snack vectors in there of 264, and then a reconstructed audio of 294,912. So uh, there you are, right? And then so um, this is uh, the other thing, cool thing about this too, like what like uh, makes me happy about this overall is that this is like, uh, so this is utilizing wave transforms and then utilizing Fourier waves. And then essentially it's, it's storing the waves as bits and binary. And so uh, on my channel, I stated like kind of for months now, right? I'm, I'm big on Wolfram theory, computational theory, et cetera, right? Uh, here's the reasons why physics, like, I mean, uh, People like a lot of people. Like the reason why people are trolling me on this is because like uh, relativistic physics says that you can't do these things, right? And then so I don't know. About a year ago, I started making assumptions, which is that like if we're going to move physics forward, we need to actually like make assumptions beyond what like academia says, right? Academia says uh, it works in theory, but does it work like uh, it works in practice, but does it work in theory? Uh, which is backwards to me. And then so to me, it's does it work in theory? Okay, if it works in theory, let's go back and figure out uh, why it works in practice. And then so I've started to do that. Uh, and then I started experimenting around with uh, digital spaces and the physics of digital spaces within that. And then I realized that our uh, current understanding of physics is very lacking. Not a single one of you on the planet, not a single one of you, whoever wants to troll on this channel, uh, could deny that. I I've debated physicists around the world literally on this particular topic. So uh, what the conclusion is and the conclusion that is drawn is that not a single one of us on this planet knows a single thing about how digital spaces work or the physics behind them. I happen to be uh, what is unfortunate for you uh, pretty much like the foremost expert in digital spaces in this sphere when it comes to the understanding of the physics of them at the moment. You can eat that, you can not like it, I don't give it, I don't care. But uh, that's kind of the bottom line here. Uh, and then as long as that is uh, and reigns supreme, my goal with AI is flat out two things. I'm either making money on it or I'm open sourcing it. Like, it's flat out. I, if you um, want me to stop open sourcing things, pay me. There, that's a simple conclusion. Uh, you can pay me to not work. Uh, if you don't pay me to not work, I'm going to continue working. So if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.